My name's Will DeFreeze, and this is Sunday Scaries Podcast, your cure for the Sunday blues. Every month, I get a ton of listener questions. While I try to answer them across several different topics, I always have a slight hesitation when it comes to interiors and homes. So rather than answer those questions alone, I thought I'd bring in the big guns, the smoothest voice in washed media, wine guy, style guru, realty magnet. Please welcome the Club Cool Podcast's own, Phil Battaglia. Hey, Will. Phil, welcome. Thank you. Phil, you Happy did so- to be here. You did something that no one's ever done before. You What's brought that? some wine to the podcast. This is a classy podcast. Thank you. I got to bring in the, the, the good stuff. I'm going to be honest. I'm not too upset about it. What are we drinking here? This is a Gamay. Um, so, you know, Beaujolais is, is big this time of year. This is not from Beaujolais. This is from Oregon. Um, this dude does a great job. Luke, L-U-K, with a little thing above the, the U. A little uh, umlaut or whatever. They're yeah, called. there you go. There we go. There, someone's going to correct me and say like, no, umlaut. it's something else. But I'm trying to. I'm trying to get close. L U K. He's out of Oregon. Does a great uh, gamay, and then also their cab is is really nice. I would say that I want to go to Napa for a vacation soon, but I think Oregon might jump the jump it on the list right oh, now. Oh man, that would be perfect, mm-hmm. everyone, especially right now. Everyone's doing red <laughs> wines from Oregon. Yeah. Uh, Phil, today we're here to talk things all interiors. I love it. Uh, before we really get into things, I, I do have a question that I did not prep you for, unfortunately. Uh, great. But why should people even listen us listen to us today? Do we even have credibility in this space right now? No, I'm a I'm a schmuck. <laughs> I don't know anything. Uh, you know what? No, I do have some pedigree. My mother is an interior decorator. Perfect. Uh, interior designer, and um, you know that just kind of runs in the in the veins. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I obsess over interior um, more so than I do lately. The past few years, more so than I did clothing style, just because, um, I don't know, you have to look at it every day. Well, it's a, it, I think it's a sign of maturity to go from, like, clothes that you just want to, like, flex on the outside uh-huh. to being like, all right, now I need to surround myself with things that I really like that no one else really gets to reap the benefits of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I don't, I don't really have much of a resume either. I did work at a I, – I grew up with a dad who loved doing interior stuff. And yeah. I, I worked at a company for seven years where we sold high-end home goods and things of that sort. But in terms of actually designing things, I, I have nothing. No. I have what inst- I've learned from Instagram and what I've soaked in from people, people that we know, like you and your mom and things like that. Yeah, that's what Instagram is good for. It's a time suck, mm-hmm. but it's also very good for inspiration. I know, and we'll get to that. I, I have on here like the, our follows, and I think we're going to discover that it's a lot more difficult to pinpoint than just a couple people on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I will also note this is the perfect time for this episode because Sally and I just signed a new lease that we have to move into next month, and we have to upgrade some of our stuff. So I'm really just here just to, to get free information from you. <laughs> All right. I'll send you an invoice. Okay. The first question we got from a listener, and this wasn't – he was not the only person to ask this. Uh, this is a two-part question from actually two listeners. He says, I'm a single mid-20s dude. What is the one thing I can get to class up my apartment? And then the other question was, we're two guys in our mid-20s. How do we stop ourselves from looking like every other guy's apartment? Okay. So first question, if you're a single dude in your mid-20s, um, I'm just picturing what – our place looked like when I had roommates and in my twenties, it was a disaster. Yes. So first thing is get rid of some shit. Yes. Throw away some stuff that doesn't look, if you've had it since you've, you moved into the dorm, it's got to go. Mm-hmm. Um, secondly, plants. Yes. I get had that nice on my plants. list. Um, and then, you know, that other, the, the two dudes that are in their mid twenties trying to up their game from every other person's apartment, get some rugs. <laughs> Nice rugs. <laughs> you don't want just the same rug that's been like stretched out over time and yeah. spills all over it. Yeah. Invest. Whenever I think of a mid twenties dude apartment, and this is just like because I know how I am, I just think of how dirty the countertops are mm. and just how disgusting they are, and how there's just random like Miller Light cans. It's like sitting out there, just like empty. They're like they've just been there since like two nights before. It's like I'll get to it later. The smell. Yes. Make sure you've got. I mean, the, the Sunday Scaries pack. Get the candles. Yeah. Get the candles. One thing I had on my list for this was just to hang actual like things on your walls that are framed with intent. They're not just things that you like came into or just found randomly. These are things that you maybe bought online for pretty cheap and got framed or something like that. But just a nice framed thing on your wall can go a long way for making you just look more mature. Yeah. It, it's a, such an easy thing to do. No college posters. No. No. It, you can't do – if you're trying to look mature, which not everyone's trying to. Yeah. 
if you want to look more mature and have like a nicer place, then you have to have the frame stuff and you have to have a big ticket item that you're like, all right, yeah, I had to spend a little bit of money on this, but at the end of the day, it was worth it. Yeah, you don't have to look like mature. Just look like you have it together, like it's been thought out, something. And if you have some plants in your place, like it always kind yeah. of puts out the vibe like, yeah, I can keep a plant alive. Right. Not to, <laughs> I'm responsible. Not to brag. As someone who currently has no plants in his place. Will. I know, it's bad. I mean, it's not helping that we're moving soon, but at the same time, uh, the plant that we had, I just, I just disrespected it. Uh, Sally, <laughs> Sally went out of time, town for about three weeks, and I, I just kind of just ignored it. And then yeah. when she came back, she was like, "Yeah, that thing's just dead." I don't have a good track record with with plants, unfortunately. Yeah. Have you ever? Have you? Ever, where do you get your plants? Uh, so here in town, the the best spot is over on the east side, Tillery mm -hmm. and East Side Succulents. They're mm -hmm. on the same lot, but Great Outdoors is also fabulous Cut. on South Congress. Because yeah, I always I always just struggle. I'm like, I don't know where to go. I, I I've gone to Lowe's and bought like yeah plants there before uh -huh. and stuff like that. But I'm just I haven't gotten into the plant game yet. Yeah, we also steal a lot from our parents. They have a huge plant game, and we um, took a bit of a, a pencil cactus, mm -hmm. replanted it. That thing has just taken off. They pencil grow cactus. like weeds. Yeah, they, it's insane. Uh, one of my buddies, he shouldn't have done this, but uh, he, <laughs> he took one from Mexico when they were there. And he's like, he's like, I'm taking this home with me. Uh -huh. Has it in his backyard now. And it's now grown to like over 10 feet tall. Wow. I, I cannot believe how tall this thing is. And here in Texas, paddles, like any sort of paddle cactus, mm -hmm. you can literally just lop one off and bury it, you know, plant it in the ground and it'll start growing. Yeah. I mean, I, this this is trash, but it does make you look a little little more high end. If you can't keep a plant alive, get a succulent because yeah. I mean, it'll last for months, and you don't even have to think about it. Yep. Like you could spritz it with water every once in a while, but we've had one that's sitting in our place. It's a hundred percent dead, but it doesn't look dead. No, it's just sitting there still. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really care. It's like a cat. Yeah. They would rather not. Yeah. You know, they don't want to be bothered. Mm -hmm. The succulent will self sustain. <laughs> well, we also have the question on rugs. Which is something that I think a lot of people underrate. It says, where do you start? How do you know how big or how small to buy? Do you go nice or cheap? Where do you even start with them? Man, that is a great question because I've struggled. Um, if you have a healthy budget and can go get a vintage rug, that's the best option. I agree. If it's a runner, so like long and skinny, those typically aren't that expensive and you can get a vintage one for a decent price. What I've found is a great starting point and ending point is Etsy. Etsy has endless possibilities, and if you don't like what you're seeing on Etsy, you can go down the wormhole because on Etsy are bigger stores that – like vintage stores will have like a little page on Etsy or something, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe you find somebody that's nearby. But vintage is always the best option if you can find some sort of flea market that's nearby that has a rug guy. Yes. Yes. That's it. It – Rugs for me, I, I've never had it in the budget to buy a nice rug. Yeah. I still don't have it in the budget to like go buy a really nice rug. It's tough, dude. And we, what we did with our most recent one, which a lot of people – I get so many DMs, probably because I post my damn coffee table so much for work. I, I, I get so many DMs from people that are like, oh, where would you get that rug? And I'm like, honestly, I have no clue where this came from. <laughs> yeah. Like we bought it online at some cheap place. We, it was the same print as the rug that we wanted that was really expensive. But mm -hmm. this is just – clearly if you go like closer to it, you can tell that it's kind of crappy. But when you look at it, it looks pretty nice. Yeah. And runners are – I mean – a good runner goes a long way too. It, does. it can make an empty. It, it, that's one thing that like college age kids or recent post grads definitely don't think about, and uh -huh. I know that because I didn't think about it until I was about thirty. <laughs> so it's 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 so essential to just have something in those high traffic areas where instead of just like dust and like yeah, what hair on the ground. Another good option. This is what we have in our living room. That's a high. I mean, our our place is basically it's a open floor plan, a lot of action going on in the living room. We got the dog in there. A lot of foot traffic. Jute, J-U-T-E. Mm -hmm. It's a natural fiber. Um, you can beat the shit out of these things. They're relatively cheap. And um, yeah, that's a great option. It looks nice. It's it's in a natural color, so it doesn't clash with a lot. Jute. We had a jute runner ah. in our kitchen, and we recently threw it out because we just tore to shit. Yeah. It well, was, that's it, that's okay because it probably wasn't that expensive. No, it was so cheap and it was, we just put it in front of our sink. We put it in front of the stove yeah. and as we have our dog... Oh, thank you for yeah, the more wine, Phil. Uh, our dog sits underneath our feet the entire time that we're cooking and yeah. so it's we were like, yeah, we need something here that just makes it look a little tidier and a little just more grown up. There you go. Yeah. Uh, 
what what else did I have? How okay, this is something, and I'm not sure how, how well you know this. How big do you buy the rug? Yeah. Do you buy it big enough to to go across the entire floor? Do you want like space between the couch and the rug? I was told to to, to buy something that is large enough to go underneath like the the couch. Yes, I would agree with that. Okay. I would agree with that. You know what else I love? If you have the 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 wherewithal and the space, mm-hmm. layering rugs. Yes. Sally's very into that right now yeah. and I'm not I'm not not convinced that we can't make it work in uh-huh. our new place, but I just don't have the brain that is allowing me to understand that it'll look good. That's what I'm saying. You have to really think that one out. I'm really stressed about it. You have to really think that one out. And I think it would require uh it looks best on some sort of stone floor. Mhm. Anyway, I, I think to answer the question, get it under the couch. Yes. It doesn't have to go all the way to the wall. See, I, we kind of messed up on our most recent rug. It's not big enough. And, and we yeah. didn't realize until we got it. And we just we just threw it down and figured, whatever, we're probably going to yeah. wear this thing to shit and get rid of it anyway. But it, it's just not something that I've ever spent a lot of money on. So I'm not really prepared yet to ever do that. And if and that's a, that's a, this is great news, especially if you're trying to do something on a budget or if you're just a got a new apartment you're just trying to furnish it cheap rugs are easy to come by and it's it's so easy to just get one in the mail and just throw it down and replace it in a few years if you need to Mm -hmm. uh we've talked about things that we like and we're going to continue to do that but in a little tiny uh offshoot what are some trends that you just don't like man see now this is something i could go on forever stuff i (laughs) I know i started going down and i was like yeah i think this this list of five things that i have is probably enough if you (laughs) okay the first thing that came into my head was any sort of text on the wall, mm-hmm. if you're going to write out like um, cafe mm-hmm. or live, laugh, love, mm-hmm. it's got to go. It's a bad idea. Those things are only reserved for like cheesy lake houses. Yeah, right. It lake has house. to say like life's better at the lake. Yeah. And that's when you know, that's when you know that you're about to chill. Home. Uh-huh. Yeah. It needs something that, you know, it, it tells you where you're at. Mm-hmm. You're at the lake. Mm-hmm. Also, um, if there's a Florida Lee. That really rubs you me You just don't way. like Florida Lees? I do Lees? not like Florida Lees. And uh, <laughs> one trend that can be done really nice. Now, I'm not going to poo-poo this too much. Okay. Is like farmhouse chic. It's just been overdone. I had farmhouse here too. Yeah. <laughs> Chip and Joanna are to blame. Yes. They are. Yes. And especially like we're so exposed to it down here so much. Right. Like I actually don't hate all farmhouse stuff. But right. like once someone gets rolling on it and it's clear that they've just gone all in, I'm like, oh, you can't go, you can't go full farmhouse. You can't. No. No, you can't. I, there. I have like small things that I don't really like. Like I really don't. I don't. And this is partially because I know I can't pull it off. I don't like exposed kitchen shelves. Ah, it like stresses floating? me out so much to see all the stuff just uh-huh. sitting out. But that's partially because like I'm the type that just like if it's it's like when you're a little kid under the bed, you just throw it in the cupboard and just like mm-hmm. shut it. And if, if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. <laughs> and so it's just stressful to me to think about how how clean you have to maintain to have a place like that. Yeah, and just like. How you can't I mean, you can't even have a bowl with a chip on it. It's it, true. I would I, every time I looked at, it, I'd be like, "That damn bowl has a chip on you it." You have to dust those shelves. Yes, you have to clean those shelves and 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 maintain them. You have to love those shelves. I haven't even yeah, I haven't even touched the shelves in my place currently. <laughs> I also had and this is this is partially because I actually think they can look very good if they're done well, but I partially don't like them just because of the functionality. I'm so sick of barn doors. Oh, fuck I'm so a barn sick door. of barn doors. God. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, man. I just, I'm tired of like shoving them over. That was the first, we had one in our place when we bought it. Mm-hmm. First thing that went. People either love them or hate them. And I don't really know where I fall on them in terms of like, if one was just like over like covering up a closet that we had in some corner, yeah. I wouldn't mind it. But if I actually want to use that door for something, I don't want a barn door separating <laughs> me from the outside world. Think about a bathroom with a barn door. Yeah. You know? No. No. I'm like weird. I'm so I'm really weird in that I don't I shut the door in our my bathroom every single time I go in there, even if I'm alone oh, really? in our apartment. Wow. Like I do not do anything without the door closed. And this if Sally is there, door's closed. And and if I'm in the bathroom and the door is closed, that door has to remain closed. And this I think was a Seinfeld episode. A full length door in a bathroom. Why is that not more prevalent? In like uh, in, in public? Yeah, in public restrooms. Should be. Seal it off. That's why I really enjoy uh I really enjoy numerous restaurants in Austin that I just know have right. that. The Driscoll. They do they have it. Great bathroom. June's has it. Mm-hmm. Um what is it called on South Amar? It's a it's a big restaurant on South Amar and I'm just blanking. South Congress Hotel, great oh, stream. Oh, yep. Great yep. stream. Yep. 
Music. You need music in there. Good smells. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. High-end soaps. You have to... Th- see, that's the thing. Sally and I... I actually meant to have something in here about high-end soaps. Oh, love like, high-end soaps. That is one of the biggest interior flexes that people are doing these days. Uh-huh. If you have a picture of your, like your kitchen and you put uh-huh. it on Instagram, everyone's putting their high-end soap. <laughs> I'm sitting here feeling so inadequate. I'm like, oh man, I just have my like my foaming soap right here. It's a hard pill to swallow when you're you're, you're throwing down on the Aesop. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous what people are spending is on soap. Is that how you say that, days. Randy? I think I think it is. <laughs> Come <laughs> on. Randy's baffled. I mean, I just I can't do it. Yeah, I can't buy if I if I ever buy a nice soap like that, I'm gonna refill it with cheaper soap. <laughs> There's no way that I ever rebuy that soap. Like I'm just gonna go get a bunch of like cheaper soap and just dump it in. Um, I'm gonna call out a restaurant. Hey, guess what? They're no longer in business. Second bar and kitchen on uh, Congress and Second. Would they do that? They were refilling with cheap soap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Like, What is this? Yeah, you can't be doing that. No. Oh, man. Rest in peace. That was actually the first date with Sally and I went that's on. That's right. Not sure why, but we just decided to go there. Listen, and I used to frequent it. They had good pizza. They had really good shishito peppers. Yes, good shishito. Rest in peace. Man. Uh, that's all I really had for those. And then okay. our final one before we take a quick break. What interior accounts do you follow and or where do you get like – where do you get your taste from when you're online? Yeah, so the, like the heavy hitters are Dwell and mm-hmm. Architectural Digest. Um, and then obviously I love everything Design Within Reach puts out. They've got great inspiration and they uh, do a lot of stuff in Austin. They're, they're the stuff that they've been posting recently. DWR makes me feel very poor. Oh, go so, in the go in the showroom. <laughs> signing on to that site, I'm like, oh, maybe I'll pop on to DWR yeah. and see what they got. And then I'm like, oh, no. I it's forgot. just an inspo uh, spot. It has to be. But um, another great one is Hay, H-A-Y. And uh, that's a design company that does, you know, they, they have really high-end stuff. And then they have approachable stuff, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, design Milk. Yes. Great. Mm-hmm. Do you ever you mentioned Architectural Digest? Do you yeah. ever watch their uh, series on YouTube? No. They have a series where they just—I mean, it's pretty much Cribs. Oh, it's just a classier really? version of Cribs, and definitely a more sponsored version of Cribs. <laughs> uh, like the la- I, if you watch the Hillary Duff one, there's a very there's a very clear moment when it uh-huh. goes from her touring her house to her talking about frame TVs, <laughs> and you're just sitting there and you're yeah. like, okay, I'm watching a commercial. But overall, it is a kind of an interesting look into a lot of really good looking houses. Mm. The guy who was in Stranger Things, this is going to kill me, uh, David Harbor, mm-hmm. Hopper, Stranger Things. Oh man, his episode is very good, even though he comes off a little arrogant in the episode, which I'm not like sold on him as a person yet, yeah. mm-hmm. but. His place in there was the first time I've watched something on TV and been like, I think this might be like exactly how I would want to decorate numerous rooms in my house. Really? He actually has incredible taste in like everything. Huh. And so I've, I'm a big fan of the Architectural Digest series as well as their Instagram. Okay. I'm checking that out. I also, ha- I also follow uh, T Magazine always does Room of the Day. Mm-hmm. They put out one room every day and that always seems to be something that I like. Wall Street Journal Magazine always does a good job of that kind of stuff. Do you ever hop on Reddit? No, I don't know how to work Reddit. There's a couple things on Reddit. And like, I, I'll get out there and say this. I probably should have said this at the beginning of the episode. If we're skewing masculine, apologies. I, it's not something intentional. Uh-huh. But like, I look at male living space on Reddit sometimes uh-huh. where dudes that have their first ever living space and they go and decorate it themselves. And then it's just a bunch of guys gassing each other up. <laughs> and I'm like, this is beautiful. Just dudes talking design. Another good option is to find um, like a local high-end contractor or builder Mm -hmm. that you may know of and follow them because they'll they'll post stuff constantly about progress on on things and how they're redoing projects um also nice hotels yes like the proper here in town so we just stayed there for a staycation that looked nice over my birthday it was awesome yeah but the biggest thing i took away from it was just how incredible the hotel was itself and we were actually we I didn't I didn't know much about Kelly Wurstler before we mm-hmm. went to the hotel. Sally told me she designed it. I was like, oh, that's really cool. And then we were going downstairs to grab a drink from the bar before we went to dinner. And I look and we looked over and Sally's like, oh, she's right there. Oh, really? And I was like, oh, see, I wouldn't have even known that. Um, but huh. the entire time we were there, I was just taking photos of every single thing in the entire place so I could find cheap knockoffs and, and decorate <laughs> my place like that. How about how they did those vintage rugs going up the stairs? Awesome. That awesome. was really cool. They have custom-made mirrors. that I think they're custom-made because I haven't been able to find anything like them uh-huh, online. Uh-huh. They're custom-made mirrors that have hooks off the side of them that look very tasteful. 
they're flush with the wall and like the molding on the wall. Mm. It's just the perfect thing to have in like a bedroom or a guest bedroom mm-hmm. because it just knocks out so many different pieces of furniture all at once. You can store stuff behind it if you wanted to. Nice. And I've seen things that are kind of like it, but this these have to be custom made for the actual hotel rooms. That's a great place. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The other stuff I had on here, I actually had Austin Proper, Kelly Wurstler. Uh, John Pawson is somebody I mentioned, I think, on last week's episode or the week before. He's my favorite designer. He's just really good. Mm-hmm. Just Google his stuff. If you don't know, look it up. Um, and actually, one of Sally's friends. I didn't even know that like I liked her taste as much as I did until Sally told me to follow her on Instagram. It's JDP Interiors. Her name's Joyce. Um, she's out. She lives in California, and she's got some great taste on there. Mm. Those are mine. Sometimes I go to. Sometimes I even go to Tumblr. Tumblr. I'm a wild boy when it comes to my <laughs> online platforms. See, I don't know. I don't know how to work Tumblr either. It, that's I'm a simple guy. That's probably for the better. Tumblr yeah. can get a little messy. Uh, before we get into the next set of questions, let's hear from Honey. Ooh. We all shop online, and we've all seen that promo code field taunt us at checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. They support over 30,000 stores online. They range from sites that have tech and gaming products, popular fashion brands, even food delivery. Phil, have you used Honey before? Yeah. I'm a big up. fan. It's always on. It's always on. And if it's not, like if for some reason like I had to like re-download my browser or something, the first thing I do is just check, all right, is Honey there? Yeah. Yes, Honey's there. All you have to do when you check out is the Honey button drops down. All you have to do is click apply coupons. We wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons. It can find all over that site. And then boom, you got a deal. If it finds a working coupon, the prices drop. So far, I've saved it. I actually saved money on a bunch of stuff for my wedding. I'll tell you what, I feel so comfortable shopping now with Honey. It, it it makes me feel like I'm not missing out on anything. Because even if they don't have a coupon for you, they'll say, don't worry, this is the best price you'll ever get. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, very okay, reassuring. But like most of the time, they have a coupon. Yes. It's insane. Uh, it's something we've been doing while we're looking at stuff online. I've been looking like putting things in the cart and being like, all right, what can Honey do for what me What can right Honey now? do? They have over 17 million members and over $2 billion in savings. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in just a few seconds. And by getting it, you're doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. Just get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash scaries. Again, that's joinhoney.com slash scaries. You ready for this next one? Let's go. What do you look for in a good coffee table? Okay. Um, so <clears throat> there's so many options for coffee tables. It's like mind-blowing. You're telling me. <laughs> I'm dying right now trying to find a, a new one. It's tough, dude. So you know what I love? And this re- you have to have the space for it. If you have a big living room, mm-hmm. big living space, um, we're talking like m- either one huge sectional or two small couches. A huge, big coffee table, big, massive thing, and big, big stacks of shit on it. Big stacks of, of magazines, books, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. I like that look. Yeah, I kind of do too, but I don't think I could ever do it because it would it would stress me out. Oh, yeah. But, like, I like how it looks, uh-huh. but I have to have, like, a clean coffee table. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I don't fall in this category. Ugh. But if you have, which most of us do, we're, we're limited in space, I always like something with glass. Because mm-hmm. it'll cut down on the bulkiness, mm-hmm. and it doesn't have to be. You know, we used to have one that was all glass. Uh, that the 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 life on that is not long. It gets scratched, mm-hmm. and it's a real bitch to keep clean. <sighs> See, we have we just have a very simplistic. It's from West Elm. It's nothing. Yeah. it's nothing crazy. Sure. It's just very simplistic wood top, mm-hmm. very nondescript legs. Like it's it's really hollow, for lack yeah. of a better word. And I like it for that reason. We just need a new one. We got to upgrade, and I don't want to get the same one because I want to do something new. It's the one thing that I, I'm currently dealing with outside. I guess rug and coffee table they kind of go hand in hand in my eyes. So they do. Many, so many of the times. So those are the two things that I'm just most like kind of scattered about. I think that a coffee table is one of those items where you can, you don't want to go all in and, and go top dollar mm-hmm. because it it's a you're going to get a lot of use out of it. Yes. And so it's going to get damaged probably pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, you don't – one ring puts you in a bad mood over ooh, that coffee table. Ooh. Just one. That's – see, the ringing. Yeah. <sighs> don't even get me started, Phil. Yeah, I know. We have a new ring at our apartment. <sighs> and it's, it's, it's creating quite the divide. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that I think that glass would be a great starting – something with, with glass top at least. <laughs> see, I'm, I'm starting to get to the point where – 
we have two things that are wood that have nice tops. Mm -hmm. And I'm at the point where I want to do what my dad did when we when I was growing up. He always just bought glass and put it on top of it. Oh, right. He just didn't care. He was like, <laughs> yeah. no, we're putting glass on top of it. And no one's uh -huh. no one's putting rings on this table. Uh -huh. And we're going to have this for the long haul. <laughs> and, and now I'm at the point where this I we have this one. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, that thing's about to catch a pane of glass. <laughs> because I do not want to ruin this. And I've already made it two years without doing anything too bad to it. So we need to, we need to maintain it. It's the classy way of putting plastic over your furniture. Exactly. Glass. Exactly. Oh, uh, here's another one. Do you have any tips for artwork in a minimalist space? Now, see, this is this is my struggle mm -hmm. currently is the artwork because I refuse to compromise. Mm -hmm. And if it's going to be on the wall, you're going to be staring at it, especially in the living room. That's where we have a blank space. Um. In a minimal space, my notes here is to keep it simple always on just about everything. But like what you were talking about earlier, frame it intentionally. I love a natural wood frame, mm -hmm. um, something with clean lines. And if you're going to put a mat on it, I always like putting – if you'll ask the, the, the person who is framing, put spacers behind whatever you're matting. Mm -hmm. It creates like a little bit of – it makes it look nicer. Just more d like depth. More and, depth. Yeah. Yeah, spacers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And even we have some stuff. I'm always a big fan of just not necessarily hanging everything. If you want to lean something up against the wall, I like that. If it's in a frame, lean it. We we have a mirror, a giant mirror that we just put up against the wall. Yeah. We don't hang it. I would I would like to hang it at some point in some space just to get it off the ground at some point. But like in our apartment now, it's the it's perfect leaning up against the wall. Yeah. I feel the same way about some art. Um, I. Framing is just so damn expensive. Oh, me. my God. It's the worst. It can cost more than the art. I have the same kind of – oh, it definitely can cost more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have the same kind of mentality as you that, like, if it's a large piece, I try to keep – I want the frame to be as simple as possible. In, in our bedroom, we have a giant, giant print of a sunset painting. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And – Part of the reason I liked it was because it just blends in. I mean, even though it's a giant, like, pastel sunset thing, it blends into the wall because the the – the frame and the the framing of just everything, the the mat mm -hmm. and everything, it just looks nice. And yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, we can we can do this. White, yep, mm -hmm. all white. Um, but just the framing, it's the so framing. bad. I do like I do like experimenting sometimes with a little more ornate framing when it comes to smaller items. Yeah. Uh, I have an article from the New York Times that I got framed. They threw kind of shade at me after an article that I wrote for PGP, <laughs> and they didn't name me by name because I told them I didn't want to be. Uh -huh. I didn't realize how – I didn't know what they were doing with my name. So I just told them, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna err on the side of caution in case – Yeah. We had a contentious relationship. And so uh, <laughs> so I, I, I didn't have them do my name, but I was like, you know what, this is pretty funny. They kind of mm -hmm. threw a little shot at me. I'm going to frame this. And it's it's so small that I was like, you know what, we're getting this in gold. Yeah. I was like, if, if this goes up <laughs> in an office, I want someone to be like, what's yes. that little gold thing over uh -huh. there? What's the deal with that? That's good. Call attention to it. Mm -hmm. uh, in the same breath, and I think uh, the reason I'm going to ask this question now is because I think that it might be in the same breath as what we were just talking about. But – Outside of couches and beds, somebody asked what piece of furniture or accessories should they spend the most money on? Um, Where is their money best spent? And the reason I ask this now is because my brain immediately defaults to something for your walls. Lighting. Ooh. Lighting. Okay. Okay. That's the t in, in my experience, <clears throat> that's the, the one thing that we bought immediately at our new place is, <clears throat> excuse me, a nice fixture mm -hmm. and it wasn't like breaking the bank but um you I know remember, i remember i i don't remember exactly what the fixture was but i remember yeah. you buying it. it it's from design within reach but it's not that expensive i think it was 600 bucks mm -hmm. and it's from muto i don't even know if that's how you say it uh m-u-u-t-o i think um i think that a beautiful nice simple light fixture i'm not talking about a chandelier mm -hmm. but something nice and modern yeah you can get away with um, like a Nelson from Design Within Reach. They, those get knocked off a lot. Mm -hmm. Even Ikea. Yeah. See, I just – I think I think my issue is that I've never really had the space to put in something yeah, like yeah, that yeah. that's worth – I've never had a space worthy of having a cool fixture. We even thought about doing it when we were renting mm -hmm. because it will really change everything. Yes, and that's, a, that's probably a good call. Like I, I, I rarely, if ever – turn on our overhead lights in our apartment uh -huh. and it's it's always lamps it's always track lighting somewhere i yeah. just i don't like having overhead lights on and it, and part of the reason that 
you know, it's always dark in our place at night is because I am very picky when it comes to most things. But lamps just kill me. Yeah. And I don't I don't think it's not intentional. It's it's definitely been ingrained in me from my old job. Uh, somebody that I worked with, the, the person that started the company, he was he loved lamps. Uh-huh. And so he would always get cool lamps in. And I just started falling in love with these lamps I that know, were just man. way out of my price range. And I was yeah. like, this is so unhealthy for me. Like uh-huh. I'm, I'm a 26 year old guy, like daydreaming of these lamps. Mm-hmm. It's dangerous. A nice floor lamp, like what you're describing. Uh-huh. Oh, man. I know. Yeah. Like, I think it's called the Grasshopper at Design Within Reach. And that's, you know, that's the designer I'm totally leaving off because I just don't know who it is. But that's where I saw it. That's a beautiful floor lamp. It gets knocked off. Um, And I don't like to promote knockoffs by any means. Mm -hmm. But if if you can find it, screw it. Yeah, there's there's some site out there. I forget what it's called. That's just straight up built on knockoffs. Yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah, it's just like you type in what you want. It's like, nope. Here's the cheaper version. Well, getting a nice light fixture is really something that I would highly recommend spending some dough on. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's something I didn't think of, and I'm so, it's something I'm glad you actually brought up. Cause Good. I think, I think, and I definitely do, I overlook lighting pretty much all the time. A dimmer. You got to dim. Ooh, you got to dim. You got to dim. And even if you have a floor lamp right now, you think, oh, shit, this doesn't dim. Wrong. Amazon sells dimmers. You plug them in, you're dimming. You can dim anything. You're dimming in five seconds. <laughs> Uh, somebody also asked, and this, I think this is the first design related question before we get into some Sunday questions. Uh They said expensive design classics that last a lifetime or style updates every few years. No, spend more, get the, get the good shit that'll Mm -hmm. last you a lifetime. That's what we've been doing. It's kind of like a collection really. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? There's, we have plenty of cheap stuff, Yeah, but I, I really like going on that hunt for something that's expensive that you can save up for that you know you'll keep for forever. The entire ethos of my the place where I used to work, it's called Huzzah, H-U-Z-Z-A, Harbor Springs, Michigan. The entire ethos of that entire store was just goods that you can keep for as long as you're alive. There you go. And I, th- this was never like the motto, but it's in there. It's in the Instagram bio. I just thought about it because it made sense. But they mm-hmm. say that they celebrate high value, authentic, timeless design. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that the high value is the thing there. It's like yeah. you need to understand that if you have this, you're going to have it for a very long time. Yeah. And a lot of the times that those things have a designer's name behind it, you can pretty much guarantee that it's going to be cool for a very long time. Yes. It's the trendier, cheaper stuff that you have to worry about because you form a relationship with it. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, I hate this. It's so trendy. Yeah. It's because there's it's 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 trendy. That's, yeah. that's why. Yeah. But the good news with that is you can trash it and not lose sleep over it. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I think that's the only answer. I think you have to go with the the... You, if if it's something that means a lot to you, yeah, you will be so much happier if you buy something that you really like and you can keep for a long time, as opposed to something that like you're going to want to throw out if you move out of the space that you're in. Sure, it's always a little scary to to go into a big purchase like that and think mm-hmm. about that, but at the same time, you just have to do some of those big ticket items sometimes. You really do. And another, you know, I just thought of this because we were in there last weekend. Um, another option that is a little bit more price friendly than Design Within Reach, it's still expensive. Um, they have a showroom here is Blue Dot. Blue Dot. Blue Dot is a, they do, they have a, it's, it's, you know, all modern furniture and lighting and, uh, they even have some artwork in there, but they're an excellent option. We bought some outdoor chairs from them that, you know, didn't break the bank. It was, they have really high quality stuff. One of our, one of our good friends, uh, friends of the pod, hashtag Chad, Chad Coleman, (laughs) He uh, put out a tweet recently that just said something like, I, "Like I had no idea how much patio furniture cost." <laughs> right, and right. Then, and then I was like, "Oh man, I've, I've never really bought patio furniture." Uh-huh. And I went online. and I was like, "Oh, oh my god!" Right. Like that, that's not right. It's staggering. I well, just went. I just went to Blue Dot's website, and yeah. their their homepage says like Sunday morning. I think it might. There be, you I go. think it might be love. <laughs> this is perfect. It's a beautiful place, man. Yeah, Sally's Let's getting go. sent this the second we're done with the podcast. Nice. Um. Do we have anything more on any of these questions? Good coffee tables, minimalist spaces. I always think that less is more. And you know what? I've kind of taken that to the extreme. Ashley and I, my wife, had this conversation the other day. like Because we'll sit and wait mm-hmm. for the right item. Oh, yep. You know? Yep. And then we'll just – it's like a ana- uh, – Paralysis by analysis. See, I nothing am, ever gets done. I am I am the sit and wait type. Sally is the let's get it done type. Yeah, and right. so she usually wins out because that's 
it's much easier to cave than it is to stop her from doing that. So it's just, <laughs> yeah, I, I, but I am the sit and wait and it drives her insane. She yeah. hates it. She's just been, she's all she started doing is making wish lists and uh-huh. then, and then handing me the iPad and being like, do you there like anything on here? <laughs> I'm like, yes, I do. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't dislike your taste, Sally. Sure. Uh, uh, before we get into our Sunday questions, let's hear from Bespoke Post. The curators at Bespoke Post have done it again this winter with an all-new lineup of essential Box of Awesome collections for guys guaranteed to upgrade your life. I have had Bespoke Post stuff for over two years now, or maybe even close to three years now, and I still use a lot of the stuff that I have. Mm. I've got steak knives, Phil, that I use every single time I cook a nice meal, and I got them straight from Bespoke Post. It's That's wonderful. Very essential to have a good steak knife. It's it's wonderful. It's something that I never w- probably would have spent the money on myself. I probably would have just used some other knife. And and luckily for me, they curated this box and I got it in the mail and I was very, very happy about it. Uh, whether it's to showcase pieces to level up your indoor housing skills or cozy threads for those blustery days, Bespoke mm-hmm. Post only sends guys the best stuff every month, no matter what you're into. Box of Awesome has you covered. From styling grooming goods to barware to cooking tools, outdoor gear box of awesome has collections for every part of your life right now on the site they've got one called unplug supplies for a restorative night in that sounds pretty nice Mm. they've got soothe a relaxing self-care that for that special someone or even sauna a luxurious candle and towel set i like that i want all three of these if i'm being honest Mm -hmm. so to get started all you have to do is go take a quiz at boxofawesome.com your answers will help them get the right box of awesome for you they release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories it's free to sign up and you can skip a month or cancel anytime each box costs only 45 bucks, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. To get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter promo code SCARIES at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code SCARIES for 20% off your first box. All right, Phil, you ready for the big questions? Oh, yeah. All right, Phil, what's your ideal Sunday outfit? John Elliott um, sweats, mm-hmm. vintage tee. I've been wearing the shit out of the old school Scary's long sleeve. I know. You walked into the office with the other day, and I was like, man, I haven't seen one of these in the wild in a long time. That means that I wasn't doing much that day. <laughs> that's, that's usually what it means when I have mine on as well. And Uggs, not the boots, the just some sort of slip-on that I have right have the, now. You don't have the boots with the fur? No, <laughs> but they are lined. I have heard nothing but great things about Ugg slippers. Oh, they're nice. Uh, Sally got some for my brother-in-law for Christmas, uh-huh. and it was the only thing that he asked for on his Christmas list. He was like, no, nah, I want the Ugg slippers. Yeah. And they have tra- like real soles on the bottom, too, oh, yeah. so you can walk outside. I'm like worried he's going to show up to the golf course. <laughs> That's how worried I am. How do you take your coffee? Black. Just nothing else? Nope. Do you ever put anything in Never. it? Never. Really? It's It's been that way for about the past, I'd say, eight years maybe. Mm-hmm. Used to be just cream, a little bit of cream. I've never been heavy on any dairy or cream or anything like that. I'm usually black, but lately I've been enjoying a little splash of milk. Have you? I'm a dairy guy. I, yeah. I, I drink I drink milk, not like randomly. <laughs> so I, we just have milk around. I have I have almond milk with my cereal every morning, but that's it. See, the reason we have milk in the place is mainly because of our, our cereal. But mm-hmm. uh, I've been known to have a little glass of milk sometimes. And mm. then, yeah, it, it just has been sneaking its way into my coffee more and more these days. How do you take your eggs? Over medium. See, that's that's they say there are no right answers, but that's how I take mine. And I think that is the right that's answer. That's the right answer. It, do you ever do you ever worry that restaurants aren't going to do it do it appropriately? Constantly. Yeah. You know who never screws it up? Who? Waffle House. Really? That mm-hmm. actually that that should be the least surprising thing in the world. Yeah. If there's so, there's there's people that know how to make good eggs, it's got to be the Waffle House people. Love the Waffle House. I think you're the first person to ever get asked this question. What's your go-to Sunday movie? Oh man, I love that. Uh, anything mob related? Really? You're yeah. a big mob movie guy on Sunday. I am. We did Godfather two the other day. Okay. Who loved it. It, it? Like with weather like this, yeah. If it's gloomy, mm-hmm. hit me with a mob flick. See, I've been making, yeah, like uh, somewhat recently, it was kind of like a lazy Sunday. We had plenty of time. It was yeah. like one of those Sundays where we got in bed and we realized how early it was, and we were like, oh, we probably could have done something else besides getting bed right now. But <laughs> I was like, let's watch American Gangster. Let's get nice. into a gangster film yes. for like three hours. I love it. Yep. Man, I guess I, I kind of like that. Uh huh. Maybe I need to dabble in the more Sunday mob the, flicks. The Godfather is <laughs> – it's almost hard to see what's going on in the movie. It's shot so dark. Mm-hmm. And yes. it's, it's it'll settle you down. Yeah, I was going to say, you got to be – yeah, that is a dark movie. It is. It's like watching Ozark. Ozark, I'm uh-huh. like squinting the entire time. I'm like, what? <laughs> Does no one in Missouri have lights? Like, it, it makes no sense. Uh, what would I find if I opened your refrigerator right now? Oh, man. Uh, some unopened wine. Some open wine. So tonight we're going to have a nice Pinot Gris from Alsace, France, with a nice salad. 
I think you need to tell the people how you're a wine guy. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's it's of late. So this past year, um, I've decided, you know, like a lot of people, it's time to pivot. Diversify? Diversify. Real estate's great, but I need something else, you know, on the back end. So uh, a lot of my friends are in the liquor industry, mm-hmm. and it was either spirits or wine, and I just happened to choose this route and haven't looked back. I don't hate the route. No. I mean, so anyway, I'm currently buying wine for um, Tom's Market here in Austin, one of the locations here. Mm -hmm. It's a little specialty store. And so I just buy our little wine set. It's nothing crazy, but we've got great options. I love that. Yeah. I'm jealous. It's it's a fun gig. I'm there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Come holler at your boy. Do you have any snacks in your fridge? Yeah. Got any like pickles or anything? Uh, We got some salsa. Okay. And also incredible amounts of hummus i'll eat hummus like a machine really yeah see i go through phases with hummus where I'll, I'll devour it all and then i'll i'll have to lay off of it for a little bit I'm a, I'm a whole foods jalapeno hummus guy i like central markets um roasted red pepper it's very good have you had their jalapeno one uh, i've had their hatch chili <sighs> they've got one that is a little too spicy for me Ooh. and i'm not i'm not i've actually since moving to texas i've gotten pretty good about spice and this one for just a casual snack i walk away and i'm like oh my like my mouth is a little on fire right oh, now. Oh, I like it. Yeah, I like it's not getting, bad. I like getting hit. What's your weekly iPhone screen time looking like these days? Oh man, just saw that recently. Two hours. That's good. Yeah, that's good, Phil. No, that's a day. That's fine. Okay. No, that's fine. All right, Phil. That I mean, I'm telling you, I, that's been a goal of mine to cut back. I had I had it at one point in the last two years. I had it down to an hour fifteen for like a month straight. Nice. And so for a month straight, I was at an hour fifteen. That's good. I've noticed that sometimes I'm better at work when it comes to circling back or other things like that. When my screen time is higher, I'm mm-hmm. much more aware of what's going on online and things like that. But I feel like I'm much happier sometimes when I, I get to have those times when I don't have a lot of screen time. Mine's been trending toward three lately, and I'm not happy about it. Listen, you're in the content game. I know. I don't. I don't. You I don't like being be on my on. phone still. We can schedule these things out. We can. We don't That's have to true. be online constantly. I will say this. I've I've pivoted again. <laughs> I'm spending more of my time on my real estate page mm-hmm. trying to find off-market stuff yeah. than I am looking at fucking memes. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. I, uh, people always think because of the, the line of work that I do that like I'm always on my, my personal Instagram account looking at stuff. I am almost never on my personal right. Instagram account at this point. Yeah. And it's not that I don't like being on I do, but like it, it's kind of like you don't want to shop where you work or you don't want to do things. It's just, yeah. you want to do other stuff. Yeah. And so I just don't find myself scrolling my, my personal feed as much anymore, which I think is a good thing. I've been pushing. There's a movement coming that I'm, I'm heading up. It's called bring back the landline. Okay. I'm in. I want a landline. I'm in. I, I think I've said on this podcast, if not, I've definitely said on circling back that I grew up and we had a house that always had a phone in the bathroom and <laughs> next to the toilet and like the master bathroom. <laughs> And I was like, I, all, growing up, I always thought like, man, that's like, yeah, it's kind of G. I uh-huh. kind of want that in my house growing up. And now, now it's not a thing. Bring it back. See, my parents just got rid of their landline. Oh, so did mine. But see, I still know a lot of my friends' old landline numbers. I know all of my old friends' yeah. landline numbers. Yeah. And if I ever hear like four digits, I'm always like, oh, that's, that's Paul's number. Uh-huh. Oh, that's Brady's number. Yeah. I always know everyone's number. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, all right. What are your coping mechanisms? What relaxes you? Cleaning. Phil, <laughs> you came to the right podcast. <laughs> I love a clean, baby. When I am the exact same way. It, yeah. When I'm angry, I clean. Me too. I just I Sally. I think Sally intentionally picks fights with me so that I just start picking shit up and putting it away. Ashley can can tell if I'm perturbed. Mm-hmm. Like if if something's going on and I'm pissed off, and I'll, I'll just go into like a silent mode and I'll be sweeping. Yep. Oh, I just start vacuuming. I just start spraying down surfaces. Yeah. And I'm just scrubbing things down. Uh-huh. I'm doing dishes. I'm unloading the dishwasher loudly. <laughs> I'm loading the dishwasher loudly, <laughs> just throwing dishes into the cupboard. But yeah. it, it it helps because it, it, you get out this like frustration and energy, and then when you're all done with it, you look at what you did and you're like, you know what? That's the thing. There's payoff here. That's the thing. I think it's it's all it's a it's a lot of, to do with cleaning. I like having a clean place. Obviously, who doesn't? But you get to it's a measurable thing you can sit back and be mm-hmm. like okay that's done checked off people love checking the box yep that's yep. another thing that I, it's a coping thing for me is if i can check some boxes make a to-do list and just yeah. knock it out i mean yeah you just have to do it it's like i've always it's kind of like a 
shoveling snow. Mm. I, I'm sure you haven't had to do much of that in your, in your life growing up in mm-hmm. Beaumont, living in Austin. No, I haven't. But shoveling snow is one of those jobs that when you're doing it, it's just it really sucks. And then once you're done doing it and you look back at what you did, yeah. it's just it feels like it's just the most gratifying thing in the world mm-hmm. because you just see you're like, oh, look, all this snow is just gone. And then it's going to be right back. It's beautiful. Uh, Phil, what's on your bedside table? I don't have a bedside table. Really? No. Really? Ashley has one on her side. Um, are you the, are you not a phone in the bedroom guy? I'm not anymore. Love I was, that. I was. No, that's that's something I have cut out. Um, however, what I do have is two, just a few books mm-hmm. that I've almost. You know what I do is I'll start a book and I won't finish it. I, I'm not a reader. I do the same thing. Yeah, I research. If 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 you got credit for reading one third of a book, then I've read a million books. <laughs> but like I, I I have only actually completed like four in the last five years. Exactly. So I have two I have two wine books, and then Boys Will Be Boys, the story of the cowboys back in the heyday, that I haven't even started. Right now, actually, now that I think about it, I have a book on my bedside table that I definitely have not finished. Uh, Larry David's daughter, Cassie David. Uh huh. She's like best friends with John Mayer now and everything. I got her book, and it's at, it's. I don't want to say it's surprisingly good, because it's she's very creative and good at what she does. Um, but I think what surprised me is how much I like it. Yeah. I didn't think I was gonna like it as much as I did, and I ended up like really enjoying the first few passages in it. And I'm like, okay, it's it's, it's yeah. probably a very good book recommendation for Sunday Scary's listeners. Honestly, her topic choices are very very good. <laughs> uh, and the final one, Phil. What does your ideal Sunday consist of? Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I love a Sunday. And we will – the ideal Sunday is is morning routine, which is – I've never changed the routine mm-hmm. typically. It's, 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 it's cereal. It's coffee. <laughs> it's watching uh, Sunday morning, CBS Sunday morning. There you go. I record it. Yep. Uh, yeah, because, you know, sometimes I'm not up early. Yeah, I, it's, it's on the DVR with yeah. the – with save three episodes, delete the rest. Yeah. Uh, another show that I record on Sundays that I love, it, it kind of soothes, it's very soothing, is Texas Parks and Wildlife. Really? I didn't know that was a thing. It's a PBS show. Oh, I'm in. So think about how those are shot. Yep. Poorly. Yeah. But it's great. Yeah, I'm in. Texas Parks and Wildlife. Okay. And then, if we can, weather permitting, get outside for a little hike. <clears throat> and then get ready for coming back, you know, relaxing. And cleaning again, back to gotta cleaning. be cleaning. Always be cleaning. Football, yeah. This time, this time of year, I, I like football on, even though the Cowboys suck consistently. <laughs> I'll still watch NFL, and then uh, a nice Sunday dinner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm into it. Yeah, and you know, and keep it reasonable. You know, we're in bed latest eleven o'clock. All right, I'm gonna ask you two food questions Ooh. that are related. First, what's your cereal of choice? You've mentioned cereal numerous yeah. times. Yeah, it, it's it's. It is Morning O's by Whole Foods. <laughs> okay, okay. We're, we're, I mean, we're we're a Honey Nut Cheerios family. Yeah, it's just it's just what I do. So it's Morning O's, but with um, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, bananas, not all at the same time. Yes, you got to keep it fresh on the yeah. fruit front. Uh, and then my fi- my I guess my final final question is, uh, what what's your uh, what's your favorite Sunday recipe? For a nice Sunday dinner, man. See, Ashley, my wife, is just an incredible cook, and so what we what what we I take no credit for any of this. But what I grew up doing in a big Italian family is every Sunday we have a huge, massive lunch. Mm-hmm. So that's suga, which is like, you know, tomato sauce yeah. and pasta. Mm-hmm. And then we would blow it out and do like all kinds of shit. But we'll do either suga and pasta or suga and pizza, like make a little veggie pizza. I'm into it. Salad, mm-hmm. veggies, mm-hmm. and a little vino. I love it. Yeah. I love it, Phil. Uh-huh. You're welcome to my place anytime on a Sunday. <laughs> well, Phil, thank you so much for coming yeah, in. If there's anything you want to plug, anything you want to do, just do it right now. Uh, yeah, just, you know, if you want to follow me, there, you're not going to be very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I like your Instagram presence, Phil. Uh, at P. Batag, that's my personal, and then um, philbatalia.realtor. I think that's what it is. Yeah. You're, you're just going to the, the dopest spaces lately. Yeah, yeah. I have some some pretty great clients right now. I'm very jealous. Yeah. Well, if you liked what you heard today, make sure to subscribe, review, or tell a friend in need about this podcast by subscribing. 
We guarantee that each and every episode gets delivered directly to your phone every Sunday morning. You can also follow along on Twitter at Sunday Scaries and Instagram, which is at Sunday.Scaries. Or you can follow me on both Twitter and Instagram at Will Freeze. And remember, always trim the wicks on your set to candles. See you next Sunday.